Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again with yet another commander with eminence involved in it. Today's one is the first pre-built commander deck I ever bought and I really enjoy playing it. I still have it, I haven't changed it. But my MTGO version has matured over the years because it's easier to change things around on MTGO and I wanted to keep it how it was when I bought it. So, which commander am I talking about today? I'll tell you as soon as you've hit the subscribe button and you're going to leave me a comment and a like button. Okay, cool. Right, hopefully you've hit the subscribe button now. So, today's commander is the uh, Dragon 4 and Wooberg for a 10-10 Dragon Avatar. And it has Eminence. Uh, as long as it's on Command Zone or on the battlefield, it costs you one less to cast Dragon Spells. And then whenever one or more Dragons you control attack, draw that many cards. You may then put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. It's probably one of my favourite commanders ever made, to be perfectly honest. I really do enjoy playing this deck, even just the version that I've got in real life, the un the unaltered version in real life. But obviously, with the access to stuff I have on MTGO, this is a little bit different. So, this is what the deck looks like currently. Um, not Sanguine Bond, I promise you that's not in there. So, lands. We have all the lands you can imagine that you need to make all the colours with. Um, I've included Field of the Dead because, you know, dragons do need to eat something even if they are rotting corpses. Um, it's been upgraded to have all the triomes in it. It's got the luxury suites, morphic pools, overgrown farmland, so on and so forth. I am still playing one of each basic land in the deck. Um, because you do need to do that and occasionally you do get a chance to get them all out for free and i'm also playing the world tree because it makes complete sense in this deck to do it you can ignore the whole 10 mana go and find gods you don't need it you just want to make sure your lands can tap for any color so the ramp in this is quite significant this is my more competitive deck for mtgo so i'm not going to lie about it it's going to be quite costly when you see it down below but it is fast i promise you that much so we've got tantalite talisman mana crypt mana vault soul ring arcane signet chromatic lantern coalition relic and dragon horde that's the ramp um and it goes that quickly to back these up i've obviously got mana vault um sorry elixir of immortality not mana vault i've already talked about that i like elixir of immortality you do tend to get wrathed out a lot when you're playing this deck and you do need to make sure you get your dragons back in your deck somehow Probably the best way of doing it is the Elixir of Immortality in this deck. To speed up the dragons, obviously we've got Dragon Tempest. Um, when a creature with flying into the battlefield under your control, it gains haste. And if it's a dragon, it deals X damage to a target where X is the number of dragons you control. It's more the haste side of it. The extra damage does come in helpful occasionally if you get a big board out. But hey, I like giving my dragons haste. To make sure we get there a little bit quicker, we've got Dragon Lord Servant. Um, just to drop the cost by one. Again, then Far Seek Rampant Growth to go and find the lands we need. Um, Far Seek mainly so we can go and get one of the tri lands. Um, Rampant Growth to go and get a basic I may need at some stage. Dragon Speaker Shaman's here, drops everything by two. So if you've got Dragon Speaker, the Servant, and Ur Dragon, well, you always have Ur Dragon, wouldn't you? So you're looking at dropping four off the cost of your dragons, and it's fantastic. Um, it gets better though. Sark and free fire bloods here, just so we can add the two mana for any combination to draw the um, cast the dragon spells. Cultivate to go and find another couple of our basics. I've mentioned these already, and then there's Herald's Horn. Herald's Horn is a new addition to the deck. It's something I picked up the other day on MTGO, and you'll see it again in another deck soon. This one is just great. Name it as dragons. You get to get a dragon card off the top of your library most of the time. And then, you know, they cheaper to cast again. So, you know, maybe a reduction of up to five mana on your dragons if you're lucky. But, you know, that means it just goes down to the coloured mana. So, bear that in mind. To help us get that coloured mana, Smothering Tides in the deck. And along with Citadel Siege, basically so we can tap down creatures we don't want to deal with. Crucible of Fires here to make all our dragons really, really big. And Outpost Siege, um, mainly this gets named on dragons to be fair, so it's when a creature leaves it pings someone. Um, occasionally if I'm behind I'll do Khans, but 9 times out of 10 it will be dragons that I name for this. And then we get to the first dragon, uh, a Tushu, the Blazing Sky, mainly so we can get it killed off and get those treasure tokens to make sure we can get even further ahead. Moving on to the fire drops. Fire, fire drops? Fire, five drops, let's do five, that's better. Um, Crux of Fate, blow up everything that isn't a dragon. 
And then we've got Jinji to return non-dragon creatures from our graveyard to our battlefield, which is basically our you know, Dragon Lord Servant, Dragon Speaker. Um, that's really it. That's the only ones we can return. But you know, at the end of the day, maybe we can make people discard their last two cards and ping them for the last two life. Uh, Palace Siege gets named as Dragons um, some of the time. In Khan some of the time. It really depends what's happened in the game so far. I've played both versions of it. It's very good either way. Then... Non-Legend Dragon, Botwing Marauder. Uh, whenever the creature enters the battlefield under control, target creature gets plus two, plus zero until the end of the turn, which is great if it's a Tet Dragon because you get the Tempest bonus. You get to attack with it straight away. Colligan, the Storm's Fury. Um, whenever a dragon you control attacks, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn. Uh, we can dash it, but I'll sooner play it. Mirari's Wake is also here, makes our creatures bigger, and also means all our land taps for an additional colour, which speeds up us getting our dragons out. Wasitoria and the Cuckoo Queen, um, another dragon I wanted to play around with. I do like this one as well. I've done a separate deck tech on that as well. But I just want to play it here because it's a dragon. Um, gives you a little bit of sacrifice. If you don't, you get another dragon, you know. Why not? I'm not going to complain about it. <laughs> Sarkin is the only other planeswalker in the deck. Um, this one obviously does the minus two to give you a dragon or the plus one draw card and add a mana. It's very rare we get to do the minus eight because Sarkin tends to die when everyone works out that you're playing it. Uh, but, you know, the draw a card and the four four dragon token can be nice. Sinian of the Ur Dragon is also here, just so we can search the library for a dragon permanent card and put it in the graveyard and make it a copy if we need to. Sometimes it's a way we need to win the game. Kaira, the Swirling Sky, just to mill six and then return two instants, maybe. Um, but nine times, most of the time, that never happens. We haven't got enough instants of sorceries in our graveyard to do this. So it is a bounce some things that are annoying us. Um, it's probably one of the weaker dragons in the deck, but hey, I want to try and play all of the... I keep this one updated, so we have got a lot of the Neo Dynasty ones in here. Lathis should have been you know is if i am going to change the original paper deck this is the one card i'm going to change it for this is just fantastic um dragons you're always going to get dragons in play and getting the extra five five tokens really does give your opponents a bit of a headache jugan the original one going back in time um get the five plus one plus one counters it's fine but it's a five five flyer for six mana i'm copy with that silimgur the drifting death uh does the whole gives everything minus one minus one Yep, um, that's fine. <laughs> Savage Vent Maul to help us ramp. The six mana you get after the combat step if you get to attack with it is really helpful in this deck, believe it or not. Croesus the Purger. Again, it's going back in time to Invasion. I want to try and play the Invasion Dragons as well. This card's quite relevant at the moment. There's a lot of monocolored decks kicking around on MTGO, so it does have its real purpose in this deck. Broodmate gives you, you know, eight mana. Um, sorry. Six mana for eight powers worth of creatures. Drazigaz, the igniter. Again, we can blow things up, you know, burn it out if you do choose a color. Then that player reveals their hand and drags their deals damage to that player equals the number of cards revealed this way. So, you know, if you hit someone who's decided to hoard their cards and get 12, 13 cards in play, it really does hurt them or in their hand. We've got the incinerator as well. Uh, beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, Zitora deals damage equals that creature's power to any target, and you create three treasure tokens. So you can sack your dragons around if you need to, just to get that final bit of damage in. Paladin Mauls, just for the whole, let's have hexproof until it gets dealt damage or deals damage. Rith, yeah, have to have Rith in here. I did a whole deck tech on Rith a while back, um, just to celebrate release of one of the sets. But yeah, Rith's in this deck as well. Trevor the Renewer, um, bit of life gain, you can't complain about that. Ozorio the Avenger, get to do the whole white three damage to each non-white creature, which does help control the board a bit. In it the Dreamer, uh, to go and nick something. Got no issue with that. And then obviously I've updated this deck to include Miram. You know, it's a no-brainer now in any dragon deck. You either play Ur Dragon or you play Miram as your commander. This deck's obviously got Ur Dragon. Miram I've done lots of deck techs and gameplay videos on, so have a look through the channel if you haven't seen them before. <laughs> Numot the Devastator. I figured we might as well have this as well, destroy a couple of lands. You know, um, Gay's Cradle's still running around. There are... What else have we got? That's annoying... Um, Maze of Ith, for example, you know, if we can get it in, do it, it's all good. 
And Ramos the Dragon Engine is also here. Whenever you cast a spell, put plus one, plus one counter on it for each of that spell's colours. And then you can possibly quite easily add ten mana to the mana pool really quickly. So it's all good. Going up to seven, Balefile Dragon, just to do the whole it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. It's great paired with Mirren. Um, Dracoseth the Maw of Flames is also here. Four, three, and three. Yep, I cope with that. Especially, you know, hopefully we'll have haste by we get in there with Dragon Tempest. Old Norbone to get some more treasure tokens. Bladewing the Risen to return something from the graveyard to play. And there probably will be dragons in the graveyard by the time you get to cast Bladewing. Ataka just wins the game, gives all your creatures double, all your dra attacking dragons double strike until the end of turn, and no one can really get out of it, which makes it fantastic. But Dragon Lord Ataka is not bad either, just to come in and do five damage spread around as you want it to be. Daragaz is reincarnated, get the egg counter, get it back, it's fine, I've got no issue with that. 7 7 for haste, 7 mana for a 7 7 flying trample haste creature, thank you. Um, Carthras, Tyrant of Jun, just nick everyone else's dragons. Can't complain. And then Tiamat, um, ends the battlefield, search your life for up to five dragon cards, not named Tiamat. Again, a late game core, could be the commander, but it's just nice to go and find you the dragons you may want to play to win the game with. Last couple, um, Uvatar Hellkike, whenever a dragon you control attacks, create a 6 6 red dragon creature token with flying. With Dragon Tempest in play, this just deals damage left, right, and center. And then, obviously, I had to include the Hellkite Overlord. Another um, eight mana, flying, trample, haste creature. You can regenerate or pump, which is lovely. The final card in the deck, or the final two cards of the deck, Rise of the Dark Realms, because when our creatures do die, if we haven't been able to shuffle them back in, we can get everything and everyone else's creatures. And then Genesis Wave. I have played this a few times now and hit Genesis Wave on a regular basis and the amount of dragons you get into play in permanence when you haven't got that many sorceries is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you know, going back, you've got one, two, three sorceries, four if you count Crux of Fate, um, everything else is a permanent and you do ramp up to it with the amount of ramp we have with Tantalite, Talisman, Crypt, Vault, Sol Ring, Signet, lantern relic horde you know it doesn't take much to get this kitting up for 10 you know x equals 10 x equals 11 i've been there i've done it it scares the hell out of everybody when it happens so like i say this week is mainly the eminent stuff this is my take on Ur dragon though um i hope you've enjoyed it i hope it's given you some ideas if you think there's any dragons i've missed out let me know i'm quite happy to keep this one updated as i do on MTG all the time but that's it for now so please i really hope you've hit the subscribe button hit the like button leave me a couple of comments let me know what i've missed out of the deck and i'll see you for the next video later in the week take care bye